enjoy for being with us. And I have to tell you, so I, I go through a process all week and I, when I'm working on the sermon and when I finally get to the place where I'm pretty satisfied, I'll save it into my uh, iPad and that's kind of a process too. But then usually on Sunday morning, I'll go back to read and I'll, I'll you can't see this from here, but like you see, I don't know if you can see some little arrows. I'll, I'll still make a few little notes of things. But so one of the things, I have a title up here, and you, if you'll see the title of the sermon in the bulletin, says Covenantal Promises, and we're going to talk about what that means. So, but in my, um, in my sermon, I said Continental Promises. <laughs> so anyway, we're not talking about the continents today, but we are talking about covenant, about promises between us and between God. Uh, if you will, let's bow for prayer. Our gracious and heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for this time. We ask that you accept it as an offering of praise and thanksgiving. Lord, hide me behind the shadow of the cross. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So today, um, uh, one, another thing I'll just share with you, uh, and so far folks listening, you'll hear this too. Uh, I, I've also, because I'm changing up the sermon, not much, but there are some things that are applicable to Barnville, some things that are Hampton. So I've got a little, I have a little notes in here in bold, Barnville, Hampton. So for some reason I start preaching something that doesn't seem like that applies to you, know that I might be talking about Hampton. But anyway, it's all good. Uh, well, I'll ask God to give us the word that he needs us to have today. So today we have the opportunity to discuss covenantal promises. The covenant, two covenantal promises, one being baptism, the holy baptism, and um, that we will celebrate in Hampton today. Um, is actually my great nephew. His name is uh, Henry James Hutto. He's the, nep uh, the son of my nephew, nephew Connor Hutto. Um, this is my brother Gene and his um, uh, Connor's mother Angela, their grandson, Henry James Hutto. And so we're so grateful and so proud to be a part of that. Um, so we're talking about baptism. Of course, we're going to celebrate Holy Communion in here. Both of these provide an opportunity for us to draw uh, closer to the Lord God. Both of these sacraments uh, are displays of God's affection to us. And there's a Hebrew word um, that I wanted to talk about. It's called hesed. Hesed is an all-encompassing word. It's, it's about God's affection. Um, and I'd like you to say that with me. It's spelled H-E-S-E-D. Hesed. Say that with me. Hesed. hesed. So when we look at the meaning of the word hesed, like I said, it's all-encompassing. It can be attributed to words including loyalty, faithfulness, goodness, graciousness, kindness, and loyal love. So it's more than an emotion, it's more than a feeling, but it's an action. It's an action on God. It's His steadfast love and constant love for us. So the hesed of the Lord, His constant love for us, is shown in both the sacrament of Baptism that we're going to speak about today, and also the, uh, the sacrament of Holy Communion. When we uh, talk about the sacrament of baptism, we know it involves the element of water, right? Water has life-sustaining properties. Of course, we, we couldn't, um, they say you can live much longer with water without, if you had to live without anything else. Water is that the, the element that we have to have, uh, but we also use it for daily functions like cooking and cleaning. Um, and we know from the Holy Scriptures that water was used even to destroy evil, like the story of the flood, like the uh, flight of the Israelites from Egypt. We know that uh, the Lord God used Moses to part the Red Sea, and the people went through, the Israelites went through on dry land, and then the water covered the Egyptians as they were following. So we, water has lots of purposes we can take from the Scripture now. But to, for our purpose, uh, in speaking of today, we're talking about the holy water of baptism. It symbolizes the washing, the washing away of the old and restoring the new. From the gospel lesson that Reverend Joey read to us, we can also see how important that that act, that act of the, of the baptism of Jesus, uh, how important that was to the Lord God. Did you hear the account of the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? If you want to look back at that, uh, we saw all three of those in that moment. That was very important to the Lord God. We saw God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They were all present. So listen to Matthew's account again. Just want to share that verse 16 and 17. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. 
At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We had Jesus, we had the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, and we had God the Father there, all three in that, uh, that one uh, event. Would you say that was important? So... I wanted to just share a little bit, uh, and this is a Sophie approved, so I want you all to know that. Uh, in 2019, our own Sophie Westendorf, that she came up and uh, was stood with me, uh, she responded to the Holy Spirit's nudging while she was at Fuge Centra, uh, Centra Kids Camp. I keep wanting to say centrifuge, that's a science term, right? So, but she was at Fuge Centra Kids Camp that summer with some of her friends I imagine from Lockville, which we talked about. So we know, um, so, um, Sophie shared with me that she, uh, at that, it was at that time that she asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be Lord of her life at that uh, summer camp. And since that life-changing experience, since she made that most important decision of her life, she recently had the opportunity to be baptized with some of her other members of her youth group. This was a public display of her decision and of her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. When we reflect on baptism, it involves God's covenantal promise that God sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins. There are also covenantal promises which we as family, uh, we're church family, we as family and friends are charged with some promises that we are asked to make. We are charged to nurture not only our children and youth of the congregation, but I would say that we are all children of God and so I believe it's incumbent on us to nurture and love one another in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, when we look back at that Psalm 139 that uh, Reverend Zori read, I just wanted to uh, share that, look at that one more time. This is 139.16. If you look back at that psalm, we heard the psalmist speaking to the Lord God. He said, this is verse 16, Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Now listen to the, this is the New Living Translation of the same verse. I love both of them, but listen to this one. The, this is the psalmist speaking to the Lord God. He says, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. We heard the psalmist speak of the days being ordained before any of them came to be. Did you hear that promise? That sounds like a promise to me. The psalmist is speaking of the Lord God having a plan or promise for us, for each of us, for our life prior to our existence. I, that, this is uh, more than I can even uh, uh, think about. Uh, now, not only can we think that the Lord God, we can thank the Lord God for ordaining the days of Sophie and Cason and Autumn and Jonah and each of us. We can also thank God for ordaining all of our days. God has a plan for our children and youth, and God has a plan for each of us. Like baptism through water and the Holy Spirit, the sacrament of Holy Communion that we will share in a, in a few minutes is a celebration and reminder of the selfless act of the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave of himself on the hardwood of the cross at Calvary to save us from our sins. So during the last couple of weeks, you know, we, we, we went through that series, the Exodus series, and we talked about the sacrificial system that was necessary for God to put in place, uh, with, along with the Ten, he had, we had the Ten Commandments, but it was necessary if the commandments were broken, there, were, uh, there had to be a, that sacrificial system to reconcile, to make things right. But because, remember we talked about the people weren't obedient to the commandments, sometimes we aren't maybe obedient to the commandments. The sacrificial system that God provided wasn't working, therefore the Lord God made that new covenant, a new promise, that actually came in the form of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who humbled himself on the point of, at the point of death at the cross of Calvary? Our salvation comes from our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ, in, belief in that promise that he came to save us from our sins. We know from the Gospel of John, uh, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes, the, the key word there, believe, whoever believes, if we believe, whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life, 
And we can't forget this next verse. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. The conviction of the Holy Spirit prompts us, just like he prompted uh, Sophie when she went to the camp in 2019. The Holy Spirit prompts us to answer that yearning that we feel to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. In just a few minutes, we will celebrate, we will share in, around the table the service of uh, Sacrament of Holy Communion. It's a remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ, the last celebration of the Passover. From the sacred scriptures, we know that the Passover was part of the final plague. Uh, we touched on those a little bit. That could probably be a whole series in itself. But we touched on that this is the uh, Passover was part of the final plague in the Exodus story prior to the, before the Israelites left Egypt. The plague was the death of the firstborn males, humans and animals. It was a judgment of the Egyptian false god Isis, uh, who was supposedly the protector of the children. Now, the plague separated the obedient believers of the Lord God, the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, <clears throat> from the non-believing Egyptians. The Israelites uh, were instructed to use hyssop, that's a plant, to paint the door uh, post, uh, the part that goes down the side of the door, and if, if you look back there, you can see a post back there, and the lid on either side, it's some more decorative, but anyway, we get the same uh, effect. Uh, I don't think we have any posts up here. The post, and then the lintel is the part that goes across, uh, across the door. They were instructed to paint the post and the lintel with the blood of a sacrificial lamb. That would let the Lord know, and I have a little, this is, you know, I've never seen this. So I, 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 I let Mary see it home. I said, can you see this? She said, well, not really. But anyway, you'll kind of get the idea. This is a picture of a, a man, and, and I would say a man and his wife and a child, painting the post and lintel. And uh, here's a, maybe a little bit better, kind of get the idea. He's uh, using the blood of a sacrificial lamb to paint the post and uh, lintel. And that would be the, the, uh, the sign that would protect them. Uh, the act would then protect them, their household from the Lord God that would come through and take the firstborn, human or animal, of each household that was not protected. They were to stay inside until morning and the, and the Lord God had passed over them. This was an act of faith and an act of obedience. Just like our partaking of the Lord's Supper. The Holy Communion is an act of faith and an act of obedience, acknowledging Christ's sacrifice for each of us. He was our sacrificial lamb. Thanks be to God, the Father, for the life of His Son, Jesus Christ. We acknowledge His death and resurrection by celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion today, and we say thanks be to God for our salvation through Jesus Christ and the baptism through the holy water. I offer these words in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.